Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here. And uh, can you tell what we're going to be looking at today? Yes, Splatoon 3. And I am joined by John. Hi, I'm John. He is John. So yes, um, this is kind of a new idea that we had. Basically, we're going to call it a live dissection, where we look through a trailer where there are all sorts of lovely hidden wibbly bits, and we're going to look at them. But we're going to do it live because... It's quicker and easier. Let's not let's not lie about it. <laughs> so we've got we've got the Splatoon 3 trailer here, and um, so if we go all the way back to the start, or at least near enough, so there's not a huge amount to look at uh, to begin with, is there, John? No, we're just kind of in a, a desert area, and it, it, in fact, it takes a little while to really figure out that we're looking at Splatoon at the moment. Yeah. Like, what indication is there? And Apart it, from this. it happens around about here, and the <laughs> thing is, the salmon that gave it away for me. Um, although the inkling does very much look like an inkling. Although, are they just an inkling at this point? It's, uh, well, yeah, you can tell from the eyes. But as you can see from this frame here, you can actually select an octoling from the very start, which you've never been able to do. E even in, um, you know, Octo Expansion, you were an, uh, an octoling. But this is, um, this is new, isn't it? There's another cool thing here, too. Uh, no gender profiles. In fact, when they go further That's into true, the, yeah. the hair part, um, you can have you can have basically hair that was made for the Inkling Boy in previous games on Inkling Girl. Yeah. So that's really cool. We are nearly there. Is that... Hang on, those eyes are also multicoloured, I've just realised. But yeah, here, here's the um, here's the hairstyle thing. So you can see that there's... Um, you can just basically pick any hairstyle you want, which is which is always cool. That one just right to the one that it's highlighting now, that's like the default Inkling Boy hairstyle. So that's yeah. really cool that they've basically said, you know, have anything you want. It doesn't matter. Oops, sorry, my microphone. <laughs> I'm keeping that in. <laughs> <laughs> Have anything you want. It really doesn't matter. Just do what you like. And that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's like, uh, you know, like when you got your Mies, you've got full access to all the haircuts. Because what if, even if you're just, you know, a bloke, but you've got long hair, you, you might as well have long hair. You know, <laughs> what's the harm in it? I've never quite understood um, uh, separating things out like that. Pokemon. No. Um, if you go back just a tiny bit to the um, the Octoling and Inkling uh, selection screen. Let's go a little bit further. Oh, oh, we're dropping frames. This is the problem oh, when no. you do things live. <laughs> um, so I there think we go. The yeah. only thing that's really differentiating the, the two Inkling types, I think it's just the eyebrows. I think the eyebrows are thicker on what would usually be like the Inkling boy or Octoling boy. I think that's literally it. I think you're right. Yeah, I think it, that is the only difference, which is... Um, that's interesting, and I suppose there'll probably be a difference in the voice as there is in the other games. Mm. There'll be a higher pitch on the, um, on the, uh, for lack of a better term, the uh, female octoling and the male octoling will have a deeper voice and will go mm, yes instead of woo me. Mm. Very uh, important distinctions. <laughs> Even both octolings, like it's hard to like point at one and see which gender they are. So I, I, I like this a lot. Yeah. I think it just, it opens things up, you know. Um, pick a skin tone, that's pretty standard. Um, yeah. We've done it before, but this, I, I didn't notice. But you look at it, and they go through the eyes, and some of them are uh, not quite heterochromatic, but they are different eye colours, you know, sort of, you've got kind of like a hazel eye colour there, rather than a block colour. Uh, uh -huh. As you can see, that one, uh, they've got green at the moment there, but that one... The yellow is definitely, it's not just yellow, it's kind of orangey at the outside, which is a, is a bit of variety, and I know that quite a few people aren't able to get the eye colour that actually represents them in a lot of games, so that's cool. You know, more options, why not? Can't yeah. can't ever have too many options. We it just gets more funky and funky as it goes on too. Like the, the first one's just kind of blue, then we got green. And you go right to the end, and you've got red, pink, and green all sort of mixed together. I'm kind of so, curious to see what that's going to look like, because I'm guessing it, the um, the pupil is the colour on the uh, on the top left of each colour. So yeah. that means red pupils, potentially. That'd be interesting. Or it might just be like red on the outside, maybe. Or contact maybe. lenses. Who knows? Either way, it's fun. So the last thing then, as it, as it says here, last thing, is the legwear. And once again, you can choose any legwear you like, regardless of any choice you've made prior, which is um, which is good. I don't think I can see any legwear that we haven't seen before. Uh, am I wrong at all? Is there anything new there that you can see? Um, it's it's been a while. Uh, I I think that there, there may be a tiny bit more. I know there wasn't that there weren't that many options in Splatoon 2. Is the skirt new? 
I think the skirt may be new, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's not like a wide array, but it seems like a nice selection at least. Yeah, you know, and there may be more sort of off screen that we can't see, and maybe there'll be more down the line. Who knows? I mean, it really is like the least important customization part of it your really inklings. <laughs> but even so, you know, it's, it's fun that it's there. But there is one more thing that you can customize, and that's... <laughs> Yes, that's little buddy. <laughs> it's oh. a little sam in it, and they don't show all the hairstyles. In fact, yeah, they they start going back at that point. So we can see that he's got. You can get spiky hair. You've got like an Elvis quiff, a sort of a longer style, what appears to be almost like a sumo bun, and a sort of a scruffy style. I, I don't have any idea what um what little buddy's function is going to be. It's really hard to say. Because he's going to be prominent when we're customizing him. Yeah. And we see him following us in a scene in just a moment. But yeah, what's he going to do? I really have no idea. Yeah, unless it is just like a little creature that follows you around. But I can't help but feel that there must be something more going on there, as we can see. And before we go too far, uh, too far into it, we can see a new weapon. Which, if you've missed that, you maybe weren't paying too much attention. Yes, there appears to be some sort of bow. Of some sort. Yeah, a longbow, or I suppose maybe a short bow, depending on how tall the inkling is. It's... Yeah. We've, we've never seen a bow before. In fact, I think... Hasn't that been discussed? I feel like I've spoken to somebody about a bow being in Splatoon before. We see this in action during the multiplayer clip, and um, when you shoot the bow, it shoots in three different ways. So you can, you can kind of see it there on the weapon at the moment. There's one blaster on the left and one in the middle, and there's going to be another one on the right. So it looks like this is going to be like a... Uh, a, a very long range um, kind of weapon. That's going to be interesting. I must admit, I didn't notice that. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing that when we get to the multiplayer bits. Um, but before we do that, I think there's only maybe one more thing of note. Um, let's have a little playthrough and see what we can see. There it is. That is uh, Tower de Fell, um, which I've probably butchered. Is is the Eiffel Tower? I actually spotted something that's much smaller. <laughs> if you go back a oh, tiny bit, absolutely. Um, on the Inkling's back, there's like a little red dot that keeps blinking, and I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, I think that's... is that not just the top of the, um, the ink tank uh, to say that you can throw a weapon? Uh, a oh, weapon. That, that might be it, yeah. 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 I think it's just been redesigned and is maybe a bit clearer. Was there a light on it before? Who knows? But uh, yeah, it's still, it's worth looking at these things because it's definitely a new design. And there's little buddy running after. <laughs> He's trying so hard. Yeah. Oh... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, um, Paris is gone. Yeah, uh, that's a shame. Uh, I've actually been to Paris, and uh, not for very long, unfortunately, but I enjoyed my time whilst I was there. I had a very salty Boeuf Bourguignon. Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 not Boeuf Bourguignon. It was um, uh, Coca Van. Do you know what's kind of funny is they, uh, they once tweeted um, Callie and Marie in Paris, and it looks like they, they must have destroyed it, because they the, 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 the other tower, it was fine when they were there. Now it's upside down. Yeah. And, um, well, as we can see here, it depends, I suppose, which is canon. Um, but the, yeah, this is just, this is a weirdly long shot on a train where you can see some sort of fish on the left, um, a jellyfish in the middle, inkling, little buddy. Doesn't really say or suggest anything as far as I can tell. Hang on, I'm just... Scrub if you look in the bit. background too, we're kind of approaching some sort of town. It's probably going to be the new plaza. That's what I was. That was about. That's what I was about to say. It's like the only thing of note as far as I can tell. Um, uh -huh. The graffiti doesn't seem to be anything of any note, but you know, feel free to tell us that we're wrong in the comments below. <laughs> as this is going to now fade to white, let's skip forward a bit because um, this is all just a little bit. There we go. So this is when we first start to see. What's the name of this, John? Because you know. This was tweeted by Nintendo. It says, Here we see Splatsville, the newly discovered city of chaos. It has a dated feel yet seems densely populated. Research indicates that Splatsville's development has accelerated rapidly since the final Splatfest a year ago, uh, even though it's located far from Inkopolis. That's interesting, the fact that you say it's the city of chaos, because... That was the Splatfest. That was what won. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I kind of wonder, like, are we going... Because we're on the train, we're going quite far. I do wonder if we're going from In Inkopolis all the way to Splatsville. Like, what if this inkling is kind of, like, traversing from the last game to the new one? May it may well be. Um, but as we can see, it's definitely still the same inkling here, same hairstyle, and the same torn shirt, um, which we saw earlier as well, which is... Um 
it's just the same inkling, but you know, it's a detail. Mm. Um, there's a lot of, um, uh, it sounds wrong, uh, it's, it sounds bad, but it's not. A lot of visual noise here, which is very, <laughs> very inkling as a thing. Um, yeah. It looks like it could easily be, as you say, Incopolis or whatever the first one was called. I can't remember. I'd say Incopolis and Splatoon 2 is pretty it's pretty tidy, you know? It's just kind of a square. There's not much to it. Whereas this looks vast. Yeah. Like you're looking around, there's buildings going to the sky. There's a plane that goes over in a moment. There's inklings everywhere. It looks very busy, but you can also see it, it has been uh, kind of left alone. There's lots of empty shops with um, like their, their blinds down and everything. Yeah, it's um, it, it's it's almost sort of the epitome of a, a concrete jungle, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. Yeah, it, hang on, I've just realised that that tower we see in that shot there, that's very reminiscent of the first Splatoon. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it absolutely is. That's pretty cool. That's a nice little callback. Um, I kind of, in, in some ways, I forget some of the finer points of Splatoon 1, because <laughs> um, Splatoon 2 just kind of usurped it. Uh, and no bad thing in many ways. Um, we can see a few extra things here. A tall jellyfish. I don't know whether we've seen them before. I don't think we have. I'm not sure we have, yeah. And there's also a snake in the background. I was just about which... to say, there's this big old snake with a crown yeah. on. King, King Snakey as, um, don't tell Nintendo I told you that, but that's its real name. Yeah, the official name. Yes. So I do wonder if he's tied to single player, because we, we have those in both Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2, but when you finish the game, you get these giant um, little things that sit on top of the, the multiplayer plaza. So mm. I wonder if this is this game's equivalent. It could well be, or they also have a lot of, like, advertising mascots, so it could be that as well, but I certainly don't think it's unreasonable to say that it's, you know, potentially tied to the single player. Not that we really know anything about the single player, except for what we saw previously with, like, the, the roaming, but how far does that go? We, we, we just don't know, John. Stop asking so many difficult I, questions. I don't know if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but in the bottom right-hand corner, is that Captain Cuttlefish? Um, what is in? Hang on, is he is he an inkling or is that Captain Cuttlefish? I <laughs> I think that might just be an inkling. I can't. I can't. Okay, let's have a really close look. No, no, I think that may just be an inkling. Unfortunately, that would have been a good get. Damn it, it. It would have been. It would have been. We can see you know octolings and inklings in the background as well. Jellyfish. Um, have we seen those tall jellyfish before? I'm not sure. I, I don't know if it's just part of the animation. Maybe they get a bit, you know, they stretch a bit. Well, I can't recall anything that was, like that. That was my thought, but if, if we watch it in motion, let's go all the way back here. So you can see in in the bottom right-hand corner there, I think it's the same oh, yeah. jellyfish, and it just continues, just just continues. And, and yeah, then it's right. gone. What's going on? <laughs> I'm guessing it's just a different shot, but even so. Do you know what's kind of cool here? On, on the traffic light, the um, the green light is in the, um, the shape of a squid. <laughs> That's a nice where, 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 I can't even... Oh, there! There it is! Yes, yeah, sorry. I was looking at the uh, the red traffic light and I was like, hey, it's red. Uh, <laughs> but yes, no, absolutely. Um, they actually look suspiciously... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not very versed in, um, in other cultures' traffic lights, but those look suspiciously European. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> if there are any Europeans in the comments, let us know. Uh, and that would tie in with um, with the uh, Eiffel Tower as well. Maybe we're looking at mainland, uh, at the very least, Eurasia. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't Absolutely. know. I'd be really interested to see if it was like, um, if, if the landscape of like the planet was like a, kind of like a new Pangea or something. That would be great, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Um, but okay, let's move on. So I don't think there's anything else of note here. Um, the no. logo! Oh, it's Splatoon 3! Uh, we knew that. But, um, so let's uh, go forward a bit. It's, uh, let's go a bit. They're too fast, too fast. Let's go back a little bit. So we got these things. These th these are like, I've just realized what that logo is. Those are Respawn logos. They are. And you know what? I like this a lot. Because yeah, so, uh, th this is more a problem in, in Splatoon 1. But sometimes the enemy team would completely dominate a map to the point where you barely, you could barely leave your spawn area. Yeah. But this, this allows you to basically, di it, it dynamically um, lets you choose where you spawn. Because you can dive off onto the ground and choose where you want to go. So yeah. you're not just kind of stuck in that little ring the entire time. I've and I think that's a really what, clever idea. I've just seen what they are as well. So you, we can see that's, that's what you were describing, John. I wanted to make sure that there was a visual for that. Um, uh -huh. But let's go back a little bit because you can see... What these boxes are, these these silver boxes. They're not just silver boxes. Come on, there we go. They're espresso machines. Oh, that's amazing. 
<laughs> Flying espresso machines. Who'd have thought it? I'm just going to uh, see whether the other ones are the same. I imagine they are. Uh, yeah, they're the same, just a different color. So, yeah. Uh -huh. um, that's uh, that's where baby inklings and octolings come from, children. They come from espresso uh, machines. By the way, the graphical jump here is crazy. Look how many reflections are on screen at the time. It, it, compared to the, compared to Splatoon 2, this looks like a massive leap. Like, even the character models seem really fluid. It does, yeah. It, it looks like, um, so in terms of maybe poly count, it looks roughly the same. But yeah, I, when you talk about like filters and I... It's a bit difficult to say for sure, but it looks like there's a depth of field going on here. Uh -huh. It's hard to tell what's compression and what isn't. Um, but if you look on the outer edges, in, I suppose in terms of 3D uh, 3D space, the um, the extreme foreground and the extreme background, certainly like the background background, but also the inkling uh, furthest towards the back, they're definitely blurrier. Um, so is that a bokeh effect? And is that, um, that seems to become more extreme as it, it comes in, because you can see everything, nearly everything's in focus there, and the depth of field gets extremely shallow there, which is not like a revolutionary thing, but that's that's a pretty graphically intensive thing to do from what I've watched of Digital Foundry. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can also see a few new um, weapon. Oh, I've just noticed a weapon that I hadn't seen before. Um, on the far left, you can see a sloshing machine. Oh, so you can. Yeah, and I think there's the the uh, the gal. I can't remember which one. Like the 82 gal on the far right. Um, what appears to be something very similar to a heavy splatling or a splatling of some description uh, in the middle and a standard splatter shot uh, in the middle on the left. Uh, uh -huh. Let's go back and have a look at the weapons of the uh, of the past one. And say, well, we've got the bow. We've got some sort of uh, splatter scope there as well. And do I mean splatter scope? It's been so long since I played Splatoon. I'm so disappointed in myself. I, th I, th I think it's called a splatter scope. Yeah, sniper rifle. Um, we can yeah. see a splat roller as well, and what appears to be a fairly heavily redesigned blaster. Uh, yeah. It's splat. It's just. It's it's a lot bigger, bulkier. It looks like a heavier weapon, which, to be honest, the blaster always was. And I never got along with the blaster. I could, I could never get the hang of it. It was never my weapon either. But that guy looks happy with it, so I'm happy for him. Yeah, who can argue with those goggles? Um, mm. Let's skip forward a little bit more. Uh, double time, so we see them spawning again, as we've seen prior. It'll be... I, I hope I hope we'll be able to do this kind of spawning every time we Same. respawn. I would be surprised if we didn't, but... Aha, hang on. Look at that. There is a respawn point there, but it's oh, covered up with right. tape. Oh, you're right. That is definitely a very traditional one. I wonder mm. if it's maybe a choice you can choose. Certain game modes will have a standard spawn. Certain ones will allow you to do this new kind of spawning. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, I guess I guess just traditional spawning would get you into the fray a lot faster. But you also don't have the element of surprise. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a little um, choice between the two. Yeah. One thing I'm, I, I guess, not concerned about, but um, so far we've seen this sort of desert theme everywhere, like in, in the opening, in this map. Hopefully there's some more variety to this game. Because right now, it is, it is looking very sandy. Hmm. Um, and hopefully, um, not every map is like this. Hopefully. I mean, we, I, I don't imagine... We only see this one map, I think, don't we? Um, right, we'll yeah. be able to confirm. There's there's the depth of field again there. That may just be for demonstration purposes, you know, to make the trailer look good, but... Yeah, and there's the um, the three-tier the three -tier bow. Yeah, so we play it back. Um, yeah, you can see three shots. Let's... Uh, get that you know what, let's do it let's do it manually let's get the uh, get the frame manually in there so yeah you can see yep three shots firing at the same time be interesting to see if they're uh, to know if they're of different powers but hard to tell yeah i i had completely um glossed over that fact um and we can see someone shooting there and i'm guessing we should be able to see the uh, the three shots there yep three very distinct yep. shots so, a scary vertical weapon. Yeah, which is interesting because I don't think we've really had... Generally, things have either been, you know, sort of splash damage, which is spherical, or, well, I suppose you could argue the um, uh, the, the the bucket weapons overall were more vertical. Uh, yeah, they're, they're short range, though. Whereas, yeah, this is this is definitely a long range weapon. Hmm. And we can see the, uh, the uh, splatling at the top there as well. Splatling after my own heart. We can see a blaster here in what appears to be a uh, 52 gal, I want to say. Right here, they're using a brand new move. So they actually detailed this in one of their tweets. Let me get this up a second. 
Yeah, let me um, so, let me see. Whoa, hey, I'm trying trying to see it happen so quickly. It's just a few frames. But uh, John, please explain what we uh, what we see in motion here. So I believe that is the squid surge. But let me read out the entire tweet. So it says we've identified new. So we've identified two new ways that inklings can move. A squid roll allows them to leap and twirl out of their ink, and a squid surge allows them to quickly swim up ink-covered walls and jump out at the top. Just think of how these abilities can be used in battle. So what we're seeing there is a squid surge. They're jumping, they're quickly diving up the wall and just diving out at the very end. So it's it's hard to say exactly how people are going to use these. I guess we can see in this footage right here. But it seems you can take the element of surprise and just sort of surge out and maybe even splat them with some ink while you're surging. So I think they do, they, do they KO? Yeah. It seems they, they jump out and then shoot and KO them. They do, but they're using a blast. So let me uh, go through. It doesn't look like they've done any ink damage because there's no, there's also no splatter. Right. Yeah, you're yeah. right. So this is this is just getting them some positioning advantage. I, I suppose it, it allows you to get out qu uh, more quickly because, you know, sort of getting up and going over walls like that was always a dangerous move in Splatoon 2. And I'm assuming Splatoon 1 as well because you would often have that quite quite a long time sort of going over the lip. So this is maybe kind of like a quick, just, just a way to add more movement variety, make it a more viable tactic to jump up and surprise people using perhaps a blaster as we see here and pop down they go poor octoling yeah. uh we can see and yeah. we can see another new weapon in the, well i say new i have a sneaking suspicion what it is in the back there but uh let's push forward and see where this goes so that zooms around there i'm gonna go back a little bit just to have a look at these frames here because i can't see anything we can see these sort of streams and i don't quite know what they are it's hard to say, isn't it? Because it could, it could just be a new special, but I can't see where they're coming from. Yeah, see whether we can get a single, even a single frame to see where they're coming from. Um, because I assume, yeah, they must be coming from below. Oh, I... They've just summoned a strike of ink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it could be coming from the sky, maybe? Yeah, we do, we do see a drone in a moment. So I, I wonder, could they possibly be behind this? I'm going, to, let's watch it again um, in full motion just to see whether we can tell which direction it's going. Uh, now, I see, look at that. At the start there, there's like these lines coming through. So I think that's two separate instances of the same thing. Because if you look on the right, you can see the ink trails already. But on the left, those are kind of like laser sights. Right. So do you think someone's aiming this? Like, has someone taken control of something in the sky? Or is this all automated? It could be. I mean, it could also be that um, it's it's happening on the ground. It's so hard to tell. Let's see if we can see the last frame. Uh, I think the last frame may be a bit useless. Um, yeah, but there, we can see something. Could that be an inkling? Could that Potentially. be... And then there's those two sort of globular things there. So is, is that the drone and it's shooting up? I think it's entirely possible. The fact that there's... Um, in fact, I think it probably is coming from the ground. Uh, feel free to disagree with me um, if you think, John, but that strikes me as the most likely... <laughs> strike. That strikes me as the <laughs> most likely solution. It's kind of like... Maybe almost like a sort of... Uh, some sort of special... Um, uh -huh. I don't imagine it's coming from the sky, though. No, it, it makes more sense to do it from the ground, because how else would you aim it? Yeah, but uh, I don't know. Who, who knows? You know, we could easily be surprised. Um, I don't think there's anything else here that we can see, um, except uh, in all of its compressed glory, because it moves so quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the last frame, yeah, and then we move on to the next thing. So I've just noticed something, I think, actually, from here. So you see the, the ink uh, tank reserve, uh, the ink tank there. Uh -huh. It looks suspiciously like a um, like one of those water bottles with um, flex this is made out of flexible plastic. And given that we're in an arid climate, oh, I think that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> if that is intentional, that's nice attention to detail. Um, uh -huh. We also see here this is the um, I want to say it's a new weapon, but it's I don't think it is. I think this is the return of the ink zuka with a new design. It, yeah, it very well could be. The Inkzooka was very powerful, so hopefully they've made some adjustments. But, yeah. Um, um, it definitely seems a lot more, like, rocket-orientated rather than being a giant tornado. Yeah, um, so it may well be that it's like the Inkzooka Mark II or something. Um, but interestingly, you can see the... Um, oh, in fact, you can see them lose it at the end there for 
a frame and it goes back to their right, so original it's definitely weapon. A special. Definitely a special. I mean, I'd be terrified if it wasn't, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that shot that we see there on the right-hand side, that is, yeah, as you say, it's more sort of like a missile. And then we see yeah. a canister break off just there. You're right. So it looks like you get three shots. The Inkzooka, I think you could fire as many times as you could within a time limit. That's right. Until until it depletes, you can fire as much as you want. Yeah, so this looks a lot more strict, but at the same time, quite different. And we see someone there with a sloshing machine again in the background. <laughs> I love the sloshing machine. It definitely looks like this is one particular match we're looking at. Um, but let's let, let's move on and see what we can see here. So, there, oh, there, we've missed it. There we go. So there's the, um, the splatter scope. Uh, it's, you know... It's a blood scope hanging down, and that sort of reflects what we saw from the uh, coffee machine respawn. And yeah. uh, then we well, move on. What exactly on. are we looking at, though? Like, is this is this an end game screen, or, or they, are they just showing this for the trailer? I could be that they're showing it for the trailer, or it could indeed be an end game screen. The the fact that it reflects exactly what we see at the beginning makes me think maybe it's just for the trailer. But uh, could uh. could be wrong. Who knows? And then moving on, we see. Yep. Then there we got back there again the blaster. Um, much in the same way in the splatter shot with, uh, oh, those pixel glasses are back. Um, and this is the, uh, this is the 52 gal, or whatever it is. And, uh, there's the splatling again, so we see, and then there's this! There's this, this is a little crab! Oh, wow, that's so cute! <laughs> yeah, I love it. I, I'm, I've always, I'm a big fan of crustaceans. Weirdly, I think this trailer does something in terms of, like, uh, for, uh, demonstration purposes. So it actually freezes, and I think that's actually a, a freeze frame there. That's not me. That's the uh -huh. freeze frame in the video, and I think it's just to show off the crab. I don't think it moves that slowly because there's no changes in any of the pixels. Um, just throwing that out there. Not majorly important, but, you know, I noticed it, so I, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, do we think this is a new sub-weapon? Maybe. Like, one thing I'm wondering is we have, to, we have a little buddy who's most likely going to be a single-player um, thing because there's nothing resembling the little buddy in the multiplayer so far. No. So I do I do wonder, if like, what if that is, what if that is, like, a, a special? Like, you can have the little buddy there. Or he could be, like, a, a, a drone crab or something. Because mm. we haven't seen, like, what's going to reflect that in the multiplayer. What, what mirrors that mechanic? Yeah. Because this could very well be it. It could well be. I, I imagine it... I mean, we don't know, but as you can see, there's two two cannons, uh, one on each claw, and potentially one in the middle. I imagine maybe you can throw this, um, if this is a sub-weapon, you throw it as it lands in a ball and everything, it jumps out, and then it starts moving sideways, and we don't see it. I will just check that there's not a single frame of it happening, because you never know what can slip through. Damn, no, there isn't. I imagine it would maybe <laughs> move sideways, maybe back and forth, or maybe just going in one direction. And it would shoot, so it would kind of cover an area with, like, essentially covering fire. Which is something mm -hmm. that we definitely haven't seen in the games prior. You could use a grenade for, you know, for cover. But this is, um, if that is what we're looking at here, that's quite different. Yeah, yeah. And it, we, we, we don't really see any other example of this. Like, nothing else really mirroring this kind of mechanic. No, I, do, I don't, I certainly don't believe so anyway. I mean, who knows? There, there's, there's the Inkazooka again. Um, but I think that's basically the end there. Oh no, that's all we get to talk about. It comes up saying yeah, like lo uh, lots of questions still. Back in the ink. Why not? Back in the ink. <laughs> so let's, well, one um, thing I'm wondering is, um, I was looking around the plaza when we were there. I was like, is there anything that's going to give us a clue to what the new like Squid Sisters are going to be? Because um, they're, they're they're most likely going to have a new duo. Yeah. Um, but there's nothing here that I, I can't see like where they'll be hanging out. Because both in Splatoon One and Splatoon Two, there are little mirrors or little, little windows where you can see them just, you know, hanging and and like uh, waving at the the inhabitants. I can't see anything like that here though. Yeah, I'm just looking through um, for our sake and possibly, indeed the possibly on the left. Like there's some sort of building on the left over there. Um, oh, with the balcony. Oh, uh, no, sorry. So go back to the uh, Oh, I see, scene. yeah. Oh, that sort of, uh, that looks very large. Um, quite a sort of, I would say, um, sort of Asian style for sure. Um, I don't want to say Japanese because I'm really, I'm not hot, uh, I'm not super um, clear on like architecture from sure. other countries. <laughs> but um, yeah, definitely, definitely interesting there. Or maybe that's, and then there's like twisted pillars and everything and a big lorry out the front suggest the lorry suggests maybe a delivery uh-huh 
So it could be, although that lorry could be for um, some on the far left, maybe we can see the boxes and everything. Or maybe it's just parked. Who knows? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of questions. Yes, there's a, a lot, lot, a lot of, questions. of questions. We've got a whole year to figure some of this stuff out, but yeah, until now we can just ponder. Yeah, I think it's fairly clear that at the back there, though, that's the um, that, that's the battle tower. I don't think anyone's yeah, going absolutely. to argue against that. Um, I'm just going to go right back through just in case we can see anything else. I don't think we will. Uh, that just appears to be some sort of uh, back alley, and then there's that sort of pig thing, which I don't know what that could be. Could be so many things. Maybe a shop. It looks like sort of a porcelain pig. Possibly, yeah. Maybe you could buy breakable objects. Who knows? And, um, yeah, we got the plane going overhead there as well. And we're going back to the start. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about all we can dissect out of this. Unless there's anything else you can think of. I can't think of much. It's a very quick look at the game. Um, makes you just kind of... It makes you... It leaves more questions than answers, really. But it does seem like they're doing a lot of new stuff, which is something I'm excited for. Because I love Splatoon 2. I do feel like it was a little safe as a sequel, though, and hopefully this takes a few more daring jumps. It feels like Splatoon 1 was reserved, Splatoon 2 is... I don't want to say what it's what Splatoon 1 should have been, but it felt like a fully realised Splatoon game. Uh -huh. Which, the original one, it had some rough edges, they were still finding their feet, perfectly understandable, still a fantastic result. Um, but yeah, I think Splatoon 2 was definitely like, they found their thing and they were going for it. Whilst this, this looks like they're doing some different stuff. It looks like little buddy can catch up with you as well. He's quite fast. Look at him go. Zoom. What He's are you gonna, what's he going to do? What, what is your function? <laughs> <laughs> Does he just follow you? Is I, that I'm, it? Ju I'm just happy he's here. That's all I care about. Uh huh. Well, there you have it. Those are all the things that we've been able to dissect from this trailer. Uh, is there anything that we've missed? I, I mean, there may be some small details we've missed, but I think we've covered... I think we can be confident saying we've covered certainly the the major points at the very least, wouldn't you say, John? I think we've done a pretty okay job. Yeah, look at that. And uh, obviously this is a new format, so please let us know what you thought of it in the comments down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you uh, pop out and surprise that subscribe button and then, uh, I don't know, uh, shoot it in the face. <laughs> be sure to check out <laughs> NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh,